Hello, I'm Elizabeth Shaw and this channel is all about the narcissistic personality disorder and how to overcome an abusive relationship with a narcissist. This video is all about a car journey with a narcissistic person. Yes, a simple drive in a car with a narcissist can lead to further manipulation of you, as most of you will already know. A narcissistic person likes power and control and will use a car journey as a perfect excuse. If they are going somewhere they don't want to go, they will go all out to ruin it for you. If they feel criticism in some way, either before or during the car journey, they want to take back power and control over you. The criticism could have happened days or weeks before. At that moment before getting in the car or during the journey, narcissistic people trap their targets in so many ways, from the love bombing in the start of the relationship, hooking you in, getting you addicted to them through the trauma bonding, bonding and the six human needs, through all the highs and lows that they put you through. They trap you through financial abuse, either making it so you can no longer work or guilt tripping you into taking out loans from them, stealing from you. Some will take loans out in your name without you even knowing. The devaluation traps you into working harder to please them through all the gaslighting, the way they discard you without closure traps you with them running through your mind constantly, isolating you from family and friends, smearing your name so that no one understands you, taking you to court while she's still hurt and confused to inflict more devastation on you. They might have been the narcissist that wanted to you to serve them when it comes to driving a car. All narcissistic people want you to serve them, to fill up their needs. So some narcissistic people will want you behind the wheel while they sit there being the passenger. But then at times they will want to be behind that wheel to put fear into you, to scare you, to gaslight you and manipulate you more to conform to their needs and their demands. So the things that you may, may have experienced while being a passenger in a car with an narcissistic person is driving at excessive speeds, pulling over miles away from home and telling you to get out of the car and walk, braking or swerving if you're about to take a drink, braking hard um, at speed to send you flying forwards, overtaking at dangerous places or at dangerous speed, causing an argument before arriving at a special event and then walking in all happy and smearing you because you look distressed from the car journey, giving you the silent treatment Assaulting you physically, assaulting you verbal, verbally, um, driving in the dark and turning the lights off. When you're planning on going somewhere and then they suddenly change direction, not letting you know where you are going, swerving all over the road, questioning you and cross-examining you over something you did or did not do, poking fun at you. If you're driving, actually poking you or throwing things at your head. Driving in silence um, after provoking an argument into the middle of nowhere with that cold, dark stare that they've got. Threatening to drive full speed into something or over something. Um, saying their point and then turning up the music loud so that you can't get your point of view across. They may even get out of the car and walk off themselves. They might throw your phone from the car. They might provoke you to cause an argument and then film your confused angry reactions and then post it to social media to help the smear campaign against you and all this leaves you angry confused hurt full of anxiety these can have devastating effects on you um you can also be left scared hurt Depending on the tactic, often with the narcissist, you'll get things like, I was only joking, or you are too sensitive, I was only having a laugh. Yet, 
you're not too sensitive, it wasn't funny and they weren't having a laugh. To them, the idea is to gain power and control over you. So with a narcissistic person, everything they do has a hidden agenda and there is ways to move past these traumatic memories. If you've been in any of these situations or any other traumatic situations with a narcissistic person, write them down to release them. Write down what they did and how you felt. Talk to others who've been through similar situations and understand how it made you feel because how it made you feel is normal so that you can release this and move forward. Number two If you're still with the narcissist that uses these tactics, find a safe way out of the relationship. Call Women's Aid, call Men's Aid. There's lots of places you can go where they understand and they will help you find a safe way out. Three, try to avoid getting in a car with them if you're still with them and they use this tactic on a regular basis. Four, once out of the relationship, remind yourself that you are safe now. Try to find your sense of humour. I understand this isn't easy when you've been through traumatic experiences, yet a lot of people have discovered finding the humour of the narcissist's outrageous behaviour helps them move past the memory of that fear. Five, when you can look at the narcissist as a spoiled toddler trying to demand and get their own way, when you can pity them for being unable to help themselves, this also helps some people move forward. Six, try to think back to the very first time it happened, what the lead up was. Scream it out in anger, say exactly what you'd like to say to them if they were stood in front of you, although don't actually go and say it directly to them. This helps release your emotions. Seven, when the memories crop up or you get triggered, remind yourself and tell yourself, I am safe now. I am safe now. Bring yourself to the present moment or breathe deeply, counting to 30 in and out and keep telling yourself, I am safe now. A, your brain's memories have emotional attachments to them. So retraining your mind helps you move past these traumatic events. Often why, as I said earlier, if you can find the humorous side... Your mind will retrain itself to find the joy in the present moment when the memories crop up as you've reprogrammed that emotional attachment to the memories. While ever that emotional attachment is the trauma and the negative feelings and the anxiety, your mind will keep you trapped with those feelings and those thoughts. When you can find the humorous side to it, which I know is incredibly difficult to start, but then your emotions get a different attachment to the past experiences. And the past is in the past. Your present is for you to create from this moment forward. And your future is yet to be written by taking the steps today to Give yourself a happier, more positive life and move past those traumatic events. Now, with a narcissistic person, um, when your instincts kick in and you speak out, they will say it's your insecurities. It's not your insecurities. It's your body telling you that you're feeling unsafe or you're feeling trapped or something doesn't feel right. It is not being insecure Listen to your instincts, tune into your instincts. It will help you with future relationships so that you don't need to look out for red flags. You're listening to your instincts and you know when you get out. And then when you create no contact or boundaries around a narcissistic person, they will then come at you with the fact that you're being awkward or you're being difficult or that's just like you. Again, they're projecting themselves onto you. You are not being awkward. You are standing up for yourself. You are standing up for a much stronger, much happier, much more fulfilled life. So wherever you are on your journey with recovery or if you're still trying to get out, keep going because it will get easier. It will get better and you can move past the past. So just stay strong. You have got this and you will do this. Thank you for listening. Bye.